Welcome back to Boys and Ghouls Film Review, folks. I am your host, Sarah Stevenson. This is my co-host, Mike Stevenson. Hi, guys. And tonight, we will be reviewing, um, I guess, a comedy horror called Motel Hell that was released in 1980. Yeah, a comedy horror, like Sarah said. It was... I don't know, I, I don't know if I saw it on ever saw it on television or even at the movies. I cannot mm. remember, but I did find it in a video shop and I rented it one day and I thought, gee, this is good. Mm. Yeah. But, um, yeah. I imagine it did. Um, who knows? Maybe it oh, did. Well, it would have hit the theatres, but not, it might not have been a big uh, ticket item, so it may mm. have come to Australia. I don't yeah, know. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. Mm. Mm. Anyway, so it's. Uh, I do think it's an interesting one and it's similar or it was in, probably inspired from... From both Psycho and, and Texas Chainsaw, Chainsaw Massacre, Massacre because yeah. of the um of the well, it has a Texas theme to it. Well, it's got a country feel to it, folks, yeah. and it's got a motel in it where people check in but don't check out. And if a, you know what I mean. Yeah, and I also <laughs> think it's inspired from a true story of sorts about a a a, a serial killer named Carl. What's his name? What's his name? Carl Denk. Denke? Carl Denk um, yeah. is a, was a German serial killer and a cannibal believed to have sold the flesh of his victims as meat to unsuspecting mm, clients. Yum, yum. Yes. So this is probably where they got the inspiration it's from. For the story, Although yeah. most people keep going back to Ed Gein a lot, but I but think... But Ed Gein wasn't a cannibal. No, he wasn't. He made lampshades. He made whatever he made out of them, jewellery, mm. necklaces, you know. Yeah, 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 piano keys. Man. Yeah, and kept the leftover bits and pieces as, yeah, as yeah. Of souvenirs. Yeah, rubber band. Ears made in rubber bands. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, anyway, yeah. I won't go into that. So anyway, there we go. Moving on. Pro- produced by, now, I like this here. Produced by Robert Jafe and Stephen Jafe. I think it's Jafe. I J- think they're cousins or brothers. I'm not sure. J-A-F-F-E. I think it's I think it's right. But there's an old guy I was looking at um, a few moments ago. He's like, I can't remember his first name. Uh, an old actor by the name of Jafe. He had no children, uh, but he played an old scientist mm-hmm. in uh, The Day the Earth Stood Still. Now, yeah. I'm just wondering whether he's in the same family. Maybe the cu- mm-hmm. maybe mm-hmm. that's their uncle or something. Or whatever, yeah. Or great uncle. Who knows? Who knows? Whatever. Anyway, moving right along, directed by uh, Kevin Connor. Mm. Now, written by Robert Jafe and Stephen Jafe. So these guys who produce it actually wrote it. Mm. Uh, there were two uncredited writers as well, Tim uh, Tuchrello and Frank Cotolo. I don't know why would someone do that. What's that? Be uncredited. Yeah, but depending on how much classic. work they put in it. I mean, if the two guys, uh, Robert and um, Stephen, wrote the script mm. and the other guys tweak it a bit, mm. they, if they don't do so much work in it, they don't get credited. Unless somehow along the lines they didn't like to be no, no, having no, their no, names no, tied no, no, to no, no, such no, a gory work, movie. It doesn't work that way. What happens is they have to put so much work in on the script to be noted mm-hmm. as a script writer. Uh, going there and saying, oh, you left an I or, uh, a dot off that I or you didn't cross that T does not make you a screenwriter. Okay? I know, but no, you do no. hear stories like a lot of script yeah. writers would often don't want to tie their names Some to a movie to or something like that. So much percentage of the screenwriting to get noted mm-hmm. and to get an accreditation. Okay? Now, moving right along, uh, budget uh, $3 million dollars Box office about six million, maybe a little bit more. Uh, again, I don't know how good it was. I don't, it may not have got, it may not have made it to a strike. I really don't remember it hitting the circuit. But back in those days, I wasn't going to the theatre as much. I was too busy. Um, so yeah, I might, I, I might have dismissed that one, or I could have gone to a few selected theatres, art house, whatever. Don't know. Yeah, just like um, a few, few select movies out there mm. who are in the eighties, and they probably. Um, well, there's still pretty much um, cult classics to fans out well, there. Well, it's cult, this one, but it's just a good movie, which but, may have slipped under the radar. Mm, true, mm. but I think everyone still remembers it as, you know, up there with well, Chainsaw Massacre. Some too. will remember it. <laughs> up there with Chainsaw Massacre and a number of 80 movies yeah, that yeah. deal with um, slasher killers and mm. stuff like that. Anyway. Mm. Now, the cast. Mm, this will be interesting. Now, this was done in a country area and had needed the country feel to it. Yeah. What better than to get somebody who's played roles as a country boy 
or a cowboy or something or other. And the leading role is Rory Calhoun. Now, all you old guys out there who may be listening to this podcast will remember Rory in lots of westerns and the like. And when he did this movie, he was about 60 years old. So uh, the, the westerns were finished, and I don't think he's doing too many movies. So this um, yeah. worked quite well, and he plays this role very well. Um, he's... He, what were we putting like a kindly old farmer man uh, who probably goes to church on Sundays and everything else, and and, and, he, and, and he kills people in his spare times and whatever. Yeah, and he thinks uh, yeah. there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, of course not. Why not? He's only vermin. Anyway, moving right along, uh, a guy called by the name of Paul Link uh, plays his brother. He's a sheriff, Bruce Smith. Oh yeah, Rory Calhoun plays Vincent Smith. I've got yeah, Rory. He's Vincent Smith. He is the Protagonist? Yeah, I guess so. Uh, antagonist, antagonist, antagonist. No, antagonist means um, villain. Yeah, protagonist yeah. is yeah. Um, yeah. So the he's good an, guy. He's a naughty guy. He's the antagonist, yeah. No, uh, he's not. Bruce is not the antagonist. No, Vincent. I went back to oh, Vincent. Oh, sorry. Vincent, Vincent, he's the antagonist. Oh. He's the naughty guy. Okay, uh, Vincent is now, the antagonist. Yeah, sorry, now, guys. Paul is the good guy. He's the, the protagonist. It's sort of, yeah, he becomes a hero in the end, even though he's he's a bit of drifting through the story and that a bit. But he he's a sheriff. Yeah. In this county, whatever county it's supposed to be. Nancy, Nancy Parsons plays Ida Smith, Vincent's strange sister, younger sister. Actually, yeah. I think Vincent's the oldest one in the family. Yeah, I yeah. think so. Mm-hmm. I mean, considering yeah. that um, he's a lot... He, he, do, he does show off that he's a lot older and yeah, more Yeah, you're a bit grey around there. You're, yeah, but yeah. anyway, moving on. And, uh, now, uh, Nina Axelrod plays Terry. She's a real good-looking babe yeah. who uh, Vincent uh, gets the hots for. Both and, uh, Vincent and Bruce fall for her. Yeah, but Vincent kills uh, Terry's boyfriend in an accident. He, he, he staged. Uh, and he, he, he got attracted to uh, Terry, so he took her back to the farmhouse to look after her and nurse her back to health along with his sister Ida. And he was falling in love with her, isn't it lovely? But more about that when Sarah tells a story. Yeah. Now, there's a few more people, but I will only mention one more. Me too. Wolfman Jack. Jack. Now, I don't have to say who Wolfman Jack is to And to you guys those in, who have never seen w- Wolfman Jack or hear his radio broadcasts. Look, Sarah, yeah. most of these people in America, they know who Wolfman Jack I is know, more than we do. Yeah. I meant <laughs> to the younger viewers out there who never even watched American Graffiti or this movie, for instance. Whatever. And, and have no clue what, what Wolfman Jack was all about. Uh, he's probably... He's be probably well known still. Anyway, he plays Reverend Billy. Okay. Yeah. I won't go about for any go for anybody else. Um, not that not that important. A lot of them are just victims. Anyway, um, I don't think I need to talk about anything else at the moment. So Sarah can take over and do the um, the usual, mm-hmm. and I'll sit back and have a sleep. No. Uh, okay. So the story begins with. As the opening credit card, title card, I should say, um, is an interesting one where you just see the um, the their sign out front, their, their um, Vincent and Ida's hotel sign that says, Hotel Hello. With the O flickering on and off. Hint, hinting that it says Hotel, hell. I mean, mo- not Hotel, Motel. motel. I, I, I forgot that's an M. Not yeah, we a call them motels and hotels over here, so. Oh, yeah. Sorry, guys. A bit, a bit confusing. Yeah. Moving right along. So, anyway, our first victims on the chopping block are Terry and her boyfriend, and Bug they're lunch. driving, they're riding on their motorcycle to wherever, and somehow they get into a crash. Her boyfriend is killed, um, either killed or down for the count. I think he got killed. I think he hit the tree first. Yeah. So, anyway, Vincent um, sees them. He's out hunting for stuff. And he sees them and he puts um, Terry's boyfriend inside, uh, inside the truck. The, uh, I don't know what they call it. The, hmm? the back of the truck. His utility. Okay, the utility He's truck u- area, yeah. and he take, puts um, Terry in with in the Pick front s- yeah, in yeah. the front seat of the, the car, of the truck with him. Actually, by the way, he, he actually shot the tire out. Hmm. He yeah. did, they didn't have an accident. He was waiting for them. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. So he then takes Terry back to the hotel and puts her in their 
motel. with motels in Vincent's mov- ex mum's m- bedroom. Dead mother's, dead mother's bedroom. Exactly. And he, and he begins to nurse her back to health and all that she stuff. She's pretty. And she is very pretty, f- beautiful and pretty. Anyway, so uh, soon enough, um, she gets in wind that her her boyfriend is dead and that they that Vincent buried him. And yeah. of course, according to Bruce, who's Vincent's sheriff. brother, obviously we mentioned, he says that in their county, this sort of thing is all normal. It, it, it's okay. Yeah. Over there. Yeah. Uh, I can't see it being normal. No. You would think the police have to be called first. Yeah. Maybe yeah. get the coroner to have a look at the body. But yeah. anyway. Even um, dear old Bruce said that, um, um, why didn't you contact me to confirm that this guy was killed and all that stuff? Maybe so I can set up an autopsy but he said on was, the cause of death. He was death. very messy and damaged. So he can put up a, you know, put together a certificate saying a cause of death gotten killed in a in a car, in a, car, in a microcycle accident <laughs> maybe <laughs> anyway we then get um we then get a clear shot of um of Vincent and Ida they're a nice bunch of people who own a motel and on the side they own they kind of they spoke, sell they spoke and, meats and, and they sell it to the uh, to the local county and passes by. Yeah, yeah. They? Mm? They, they they're famous for it and it tastes great or it's so the locals say and it's enjoyable file. It got a unique flavour. Hmm. Yeah, but then we see from soon enough that when pe- that Vince and Ida have a secret garden of sorts. Yeah, out the where back. They, yeah, where <laughs> they ha- where they hide their most um, where the, the, the special ingredients to make the um, meat and it ain't good. cannabis. Mm. No. As it turns yeah. out, while one of the um, their vet, vet came comes visiting to check on their pigs, who to check if they're okay and all that, he overhears a moaning in the background. A funny mm. noise. Like that's all yeah, noise. Like some kind of moaning noise. Yeah. yeah good. Anyway, good. he comes to visit that later that night to inspect it out, and he sees some. Um, something covered with some sacks, yeah. and they're moving around a little, Wiggling. jiggling about. And then, as he approached, as he was going to get a close-up look at this, Vincent knocks him out and all that stuff. And adds into the garden. Yes. Anyway, um, so, uh, meanwhile, Vincent get, grows close to t- Terry, and Terry grows to like him, but she also likes. Bruce a little bit, but well, one Bruce night, is hitting on us. Something yeah, like, yeah and one obvious. night, one Bruce and her went out for the drive-in, or well, not really <laughs> drive-in. He's a tight. He's a. He's a uh, can I say tight ass? Yeah. Um, he said, "I'm going to take you to the drive-in night," and they, they go up the top of this hill near the drive-in, mm. and they sit there with binoculars watching the screen. And he contacts a lady at the drive-in to pipe the soundtrack through his car. <laughs> He doesn't have to pay. He's breaking the law. Yeah, well, he so was um, telling everyone in Lovers Lane to, um, this is the police, we it's want a, you. We, the road. This is the road, <laughs> and all the cars leaving the um, site. So he had a place for himself. What a great <laughs> idea. But he also tries to take advantage of Terry by j- jumping her bones, so to speak. Well, I would. Ah. But, of course, she's not having that. And But before we get into... And he into, didn't get any. <laughs> Before we get into that, we then hear on the on the police scanner or whatever that someone is being chased by some by Vincent and well, Ida. No, didn't they? Didn't say who? Some lady has been chased by okay. some maniac. Yes. Didn't say by anybody else. Okay, no, they didn't he, say names. Okay. No, okay. So, so the so Bruce and 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 Terry they get into they. They drive over and try to find out what's happening, and but they never don't find out who's chasing them. Soon the car, the car gets stuck in the mud, and he ends up pushing it, and Bruce ends up pushing it, and then he ends up hitting it goes the, in the mud. Swamp, much the same as in Psycho, where the cars were pushed out the back into the swamp and went gurgle, 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 and never to be seen again. Yeah. While this is happening, um, Ida and Vincent hear in the distance at the motel that there are some guests arriving at the motel. And 
Vincent reminds Ida that you did you put on the no vacancy sign? See, every time they, they're looking for new victims, they always turn on the no vacancy so sign. So they get interrupted. See, mm. that will prevent people from stopping at the motel and not continuing on their way to get slaughtered by them. Mm. I guess it, it saves time, all that stuff. Yeah, well, mm. they make more money out of small goods than the people coming through. Yeah, so <laughs> the two cup, the couple is um, 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 a, a nice, bl- beautiful lady and a very um, over um, oversexed mm-hmm. guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you got to see him in this clothing. They, 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 and apparently, they've uh, Vincent and his sister put an ad in a mm-hmm. swingers magazine. Uh, advertising uh, the motel as a place for swingers. Go figure it. Go figure it, yes. Yeah. Sex <laughs> activities, not a problem. Yes, yeah, so yeah, our dear yeah. couple head inside the, um, the room, and guess what? It's room one. What's that tell you? It's the psycho was room one. True. Mm. So, anyway, Vincent and Ida, they interrupt them, and they thought they were going to... supposed to join them. Yeah. For sexual romps, remember? Yeah. Ah, they yeah. even... So, awesome. Yeah, they then, ah. they then tie them up bondage-wise. And they think it's part of the game. Yeah, and they dose them with um, Some sort of gas. kind of yeah, gas, yeah, yeah. sleeping gas. Yeah, knock them out. Yeah. yeah, knocking gas, I guess we could call it. Yeah, no- knocking knock out, out gas. gas. Knocking knock out gas. Anyway, yeah, um, whatever. S- soon enough, they load them into the truck and put them out to the garden, obviously. Yeah, so the other guys. They're mm-hmm. a good company. Mm-hmm. Anyway, um, <laughs> later on... Terry and I decided to go for a swim, and Ida got a bit jealous of Vincent's attentions towards her, so she tries to attempt to drown dear Terry. Very possessive sister, hey? Yeah. Luckily enough, Vincent comes in and saves uh, uh, Terry. And lovely. And nurses her back to health again. And she wants to take their relationship to the next level, it seems. And Vincent says, not without being married. Yeah. And what a nice boy. And then we see much later him talking to Reverend um, Wolf, Wolfman. Wolfman. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I'm, I'm talking. Oh, uh, sorry, his name is... Um, Reverend Billy. Reverend Be- Billy. So he tells him, um, could you arrange a special, you know, ceremony tomorrow? Yeah, yeah, tomorrow. <laughs> anyway. That's a quickie, isn't it? A Reverend, quickie before the quickie. Yeah. <laughs> Reverend Billy meets up with um, Bruce as he's... Bruce is reading a, a dirty magazine. <laughs> yeah, Bruce is reading a, yeah, a pornographic type, you know, mm. you know the type, gentlemen. Yes. <laughs> Naked and, ladies. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, he, and dear old Reverend tells him, guess what? Congratulations, you're going to have a sister-in-law. <laughs> and he says, what are you talking about? And um, Reverend Billy says, oh, didn't you hear? Your brother is getting married to this nice lady named Terry. <laughs> He was speechless. Not really. But Not yeah. really. He was um, saying... Yeah, he, had that, a few, he had a few words to say about it. He said, that dirty old man. See, told you he had a few words to say. Yeah, <laughs> and... Well, I th- I don't know what the words were, but um, he was not impressed. He yeah. said, "I want to I want to plow her furrow or whatever." Yeah, no, mm-hmm. no, no, what? no. Well, he, didn't, he didn't say that, did he? No, no. <laughs> but he said something about um, him having good company line, though, isn't it? He did. Say, <laughs> he, he did say something about him having a sort of weird disease about him. Oh, he something. got syphilis of the brain. It's something. What yeah, that mean? Syphilis of the brain. What a moron. I don't, I don't yeah, think yeah. Terry believes him. And no. dear old Vincent, um, he kind of pushes his brother out and t- with a shotgun. <laughs> well, um, you, you missed the part. Okay, go Bruce on. goes to the motel to talk to Terry. <laughs> he breaks down the bathroom door where she's having a bath. And she's sitting there naked ah! in the bathtub, and that and he's talking to her about Vincent when Vincent walks up with a shotgun and tells him to bugger off because he's he's trying to protect his lady. Yeah, isn't that nice? So anyway, Bruce is beginning to suspect something's off. So he then decides to go to back to the site where Terry and her boyfriend got into the crash, and he finds something peculiar. As it turns out, the f- I don't know which wheel it is, but it has um, a massive hole in it. He finds the front wheel has got some a gunshot wound or some shotgun pellets or something yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah. He also finds um, in a nearby swamp thousands upon yeah. thousands of cars that have been sunk there. Hundreds of cars. Okay, hundreds he said of about cars. He found about 200 cars. Yeah, hint, hint. He certainly beat... Norman Bates, didn't he? He only had a handful of cars. Yeah, you'd right. think it was that many cars... 
that it's a bobbing around in the no, sea. No, they the sink. Swamp. They sink. I know that, but there were a few there that still look like there. You could see just about the bumper of the car a little bit, maybe, and then maybe the top part to the car, this the roof. If anybody goes to the swamp. Anyway, might be on their property. and there was one that was probably the recent one that got sunk down there. It probably couldn't sink anymore because there's cars under it. Yes. Mm. So anyway, he, full. He, so he then heads to um, back to the motel and um, he meets up with Terry and tells her the bad news. While this is happening, Vincent and Ida are preparing their three latest um, victims to be ready to be slaughtered. So yeah, so what well, they, they, they cut they. They cut them up the same. Well, it's the same way they gut a cow or a pig or something. Rather, they, they get the carcass up, hang it up, and they smoke the meat so it's nice and tender and juicy and. Mm, mm. Yeah, and then Ida gets the munchies and decides to head back to the motel for a bunch of goodies. Oh well, yeah, something. Like that. And then she overhears Terry and. Bruce talking, and so she attacks her brother, Bruce, I mean, yeah. and takes Terry down to the smoking uh, yeah, smoking room. Yeah, smoking room. house. There goes. Where yeah. she gets um, a little bit more than her eye full of what's going down. Yeah. It's, and uh, good old Vincent tries to talk, tell her about the family business and tries to, tries to win her over uh, to his way of thinking. Anyway, and while she this, was horrified. Yeah, while this <laughs> is happening, her boyfriend, who's finally... Digging his way out of the um, earth of the um, in the secret garden. See these people that are in the secret garden. Their heads are um, are on top yeah, of the yeah, soil. Yeah, yeah. So the rest of their body is underneath. I don't know what. They are. Maybe it's a, they're, they're curing the body somehow. I don't know what they're doing. Yeah. Uh, they're, see, they feed them and they get them ready for. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. So it helps contain because he's feeding them something there to help help uh, put, clean the body out so it's good for smoking out. Yeah. So they're probably feeding him something for a week or two. Yeah, so or, yeah, whatever, yeah. And of course they they cut their throats and stitch them up so, so they, they can't won't yell speak. Scream, that way get it. Yeah. So we're getting out. So of that. anyway, Terry's bro- boyfriend digs his way out. He also helps the others out and they start um slowly zombie like you know, walking through yeah, a bit the like um, living dead and that sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah. well, they're, they're being stuck in the ground for a few days yeah. or a week or and something. And then they yeah. attack Ida, and then um, some of them um, were pushed down, but eventually they got the best of her. And while this is happening, um, Terry's boyfriend then comes to the um, the smoking meat room, and he sees his sister, daughter, his, his girlfriend. girlfriend, going to be the next. V- on Next the top victim. of the yeah. so she, she jumps into from the ceiling and Full start sky, sky yeah. and start attacking Vincent. Yeah, and there's a big bit of fight, but he's been on the weak side from being yeah beaten up and starved yeah. and whatever yeah. he's been. Yeah, yeah, I bet you guys thought he was going to be the hero of the story. Sadly, nope. I'm no. misunderstanding. So Vincent Dear gets the better of him. Yeah, and he throws him into a furnace. Oh gosh. Anyway, meanwhile yeah. Bruce wakens Yucky. up and he mm. then heads down to the smoking meat room and he then uses his own tries to fight dear old Vincent with um he, yeah, a with, shotgun. with a shotgun at first. Yeah, a rifle, yeah, yeah. But, and, he, uh, but Vincent has the upper hand by he, having he a chainsaw. Has a chainsaw. I wonder if he knows Leatherface. I don't know. Maybe oh, he I does. Don't know. I think he's wearing a similar he's wearing a mask, he, he, a, a pig he's got a face. Pig head. Yeah. And that reminds me of Mr. Saw and his guys. They wore big heads, didn't they? Yeah, ah. I think it was um, them that started it first, obviously. So yeah. anyway, um eventually um, Bruce picks up a smaller um, chainsaw and tries to start it up, but I think it was a bit stiff. Well, it hadn't been so. He didn't prime it, you know. He tries to push and, motors, and s- tries to um, get tries to say get some time in to try to get it started. You know, pushing. Um, <laughs> eventually, it starts, and they start <laughs> and they start a, a chain sword sword fight. Yeah, of sorts. But anyway. Anyway, soon enough... Actually, you... this is the part I didn't like. Why? What's wrong with it? It went too long. Oh. The, the whole movie was going good until this fight scene. It just dragged on. And while this is happening, the machine that, that Terry's strapped to is starting up. Yeah, it's like a conveyor belt which goes into a slicer. Yeah. Can you imagine that? Gross. Well, that's how they do it, isn't it? Eventually, Bruce gets the upper hand and he defeats... 
Vincent. Yeah, he gets a, he gets his chainsaw into Vincent's side and cuts him open about kidney level. Very nice. Eventually, he <clears throat> Bruce runs to Terry's side and he takes her off the um the little ramp and my hero and she hugs him and they look like they're about to kiss but we hear Vincent crying out and he they wasn't. then head back to him and the chainsaw is still cut into his side. And Bruce turns off. And Not a good brother. Yeah, yeah and he then Vincent's. Um, feeling a little... A bit guilty. And yeah. He knows he's not long this for oh, I'll leave you in the motel and... And the animals. And the animals, my secret garden. And, and he started to get a bit bluesy and upset. And he, he says... I should have used... Yeah. I, I've sinned. I've been using preservatives. <laughs> yeah. I thought a good line. And yeah, Bruce line. and yeah. Terry are, confu- are baffled by this. So Bruce. they head to the secret garden. And they there they find... Ida, head first in one of yeah, the oh, holes. Yeah, you see her feet sticking out of the ground, have a bag over them. Yeah, and mm-hmm. um, Bruce touches the legs and they start they shaking. They still wiggle a bit because he, she's not quite dead yet, but she soon will be because he can't breathe upside down in a hole. Yeah, and no, the rest yeah. of the victims have either run off well, or... Well, yeah, we don't know what happened to the victims who got away out of the holes. They, just... yeah, they could have just headed off and tried to find someone to help them. Yeah, but... Or maybe they just ran. Well, you didn't really need them in the ending. The, the end it was really like, hey... Uh, the naughty girl guys is being killed, and the young girls being saved, and yeah. that sort of stuff. And yeah, so, yeah. Bruce and Terry they walk back t- through the motel, and Bruce says comments that he was glad that at eleven he ran away from home. There was a yeah, we don't know why. We don't know why we, because throughout this movie they mentioned they talked about their family, but I never figured out yeah. why. They talk about my um, grump. Grandma did this, and Mother did this, and yeah, but yeah. no one there, and we don't know when they died or yeah. how they and died did, or whether they um, ate them. And why did Bruce yeah. ran away in the first place? Did, was it a traumatic experience that caused him to run away? And he he, he might have been the youngest. Yeah. So that makes if he say let's say he's about forty, mm. Vincent might be about sixty because he's about eight, 58 years old, mm. the, the actor. So mm. if he's playing a sixty-year-old, mm. now the thing is, if he's sixty. <coughs> And he was 12, he could have been about 30 years old. So he could have been running the farm and the head of the household because the parents were there. Yeah, and he true. might have thought, hey, my big brother's a bit wacky. Mm. Uh, I'm leaving? Mm. Yeah. Who knows? Yeah, so yeah. Terry, um, Bruce <coughs> goes on about <coughs> how he's going to have to fill out a lot of paperwork and all that stuff about the um, motel murders and stuff. And Terry says, why don't you just burn it? And he says, arsenic? I mean, arsenic. 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 Arsenic's good, but I, I mean, not arsenic. I mean, no, arson. he says arson. That it's that's bad. That's not really that's good. That's against the law. But you do. T- Terry mm. says um, that motel is evil, and then just then, the sign explodes, and uh, well, that, you're done a bit part of it, and where the O's has been flickering on and off, like in the ho- motel hell, the O died and just became motel. Hell. And oh, wait, as the credits roll, we watch the um, um at, as the credits end, the sign completely blows up. You know, Ooh, really good. I thought it was cool. Yeah, electric, an electrical fault. <laughs> I thought it was cool. I like to think that may have um, destroyed the motel. You know, maybe it, it out of maybe God's way of saying this motel should not have been standing. Exactly. It's evil. It's corrupt. <laughs> Even though technically it, all the murders didn't take place in the motels per se. Well, they don't have to. They're it's in actually, the same area. It's yeah. actually more in to do on the roads and well, uh, wait in a the minute. secret they, garden. They were alive when they came off the road in many cases. They put it in the garden just down the end of the laneway. They're not taken to the smokehouse next to the motel. That's I think the motel is really close to the middle of it. Yeah, I yeah, And that's where they lived. Yeah, mm-hmm. I suppose you have a good point. Anyway. I, anyway, I do think this movie is pretty fun. cool. It was, and look, it's a fun comedy horror. Okay, it's tongue in cheek. Yes, it's a bit grisly in some bits, but it's not as gris- grisly as some. Mm. Uh, there's enough comedy in it to make it chuckle worthy. Yeah. Like chuckle worthy. That's a good word, isn't it? And mm. I do think that um, I do like um, Vincent's. Um, you know, I like the fact how he p- portrays um, the. Um, I like it um, how Roy. 
Calhoun. Calhoun is able to portray Vincent in but this. But he's a nice uh, laid-back country fellow and stuff with a good moral background and everything yeah. else. But and even mor- he's moral, a killer. Yeah, even good. moral yeah. people could have a, a few skeletons in their closet. A couple? About 200, well, 200 cars. Mm-hmm. Lots of skeletons rattling around there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and production. Now, we'll move on a bit of production work Thank here. You. The movie was filmed... At the Sable Ranch in Santa Clarita in oh, California. So it's a real ranch. Wait a minute, yeah. With the white brick uh, stable as a backdrop for the motel and farm. Now, wait a minute. The Sable Ranch has been used in hundreds of Hollywood and independent movies and TV shows since the early 1920s. Wow. So it's a regular. So it's it, been used on regular basis. lots of movies. movies? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, don't cool. know. I don't have a list of what movies or TV shows, mm. but has been used, yeah. Now, interiors of the motel, farm, smokehouse were filmed at the uh, Laird uh, International Studios in Col- Culver City, California. Uh, yeah, so uh, there's not much more to say about it. It's, it's, it was a location shoot. So, yeah, I can't say... And a bit over there, and a bit over there, and a bit over there. It was all done in the ranch area mm. and, and the studio. So um, it had a great feel. Uh, it looked good. It felt good. And I, I, I almost want to stay there for a holiday, but, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, it's yeah, impending doom and that sort of stuff, you know. Mm. Now, the, the motel in The Shining I'll stay in. Mm. The big one. Very nice. <laughs> Very nice. Yeah, anyway. Uh, now, critical response. Oh, boy, this week. No, no, no. I was, I was taken aback. I was taken forward as well and sideways. Now, um, most of the reviews were medium to positive with only a couple of negative ones. Hmm. And even the guys who normally go negative saw some redeeming qualities in it. I'll read a couple of them off for you, but I won't give you all of them. I've got a whole list of them here, but... Um, Rotten Tomatoes shows up quite a lot, uh, and it got about a 68% rating. Uh, it says it's eerie and satirical. Uh, it has, it has no vacancy when it comes to lowbrow horror gags. I don't know what that quite means. I think it means it's not too bad. Yeah, there's enough to keep it going. Yeah. Metacritic, that got 64 out of 100. Now, this guy here, he normally is very hard nut to crack. Robert Ebert uh, gave the film score three out of four. What Motel Hell brings to this genre is the refreshing sound of laughter. The movie is disgusting, of course. It's impossible to satirise this material, I imagine, without presenting the subject matter you're satirising. So he's just saying he doesn't like that sort of movie, but... You have to see the bad bit to make the humour work. So he appreciates the fact that the humour works against the, the bad stuff. Yeah. Mm. So he, he's, he's a hard nut to crack on these reviews. Mm. Um, DV Talk uh, gave it uh, four out of five stars. With its crackling, cracklingly dark sense of humour and some unforgettable twisted visuals, Motel Hell still feels fresh and wildly unique even all these decades later. So this must Sweet. be done. So this a, might be a reviewer that's a, a bit um, later say on. a few years later. Well, it's done. Yeah, you know, it's about maybe it's about three decades. So about about uh, two thousand ten ish. Mm. Yeah. So yeah. That's always good. Like we're doing. Um, uh, the Terror Trap gave it three out of four stars. A thoroughly enjoyable low budget horror with effective low key doses of black humour. I wish they don't use that term. No, it's black humour. That's what I call it, black humour. I know that, but oh, I like. I just Lord. usually like calling it comedy horror. It's then. called black humour. It's a black comedy. Deal with it. That's what the genre is. I know, but, oh. but I just hate the term because it puts... It says, says the, the wrong it's, thing. No, it's, it's not a comedy like... Tom and Jerry cartoon. I didn't it is a black. I didn't mean that. I meant like the black part. It sounds disrespectful. It's not. It's black. It white is nice and pure, and black is evil. Okay, black comedy. Okay? I just like calling it horror com- um, comedy horror. Not get over it. No, no. Um, Anthony Rigo from Dread Central rated it four out of, uh, four out of five, calling it darkly humorous film played straight replete with equal parts of hilarity hilarity and horror. Uh, it just goes on and on. There's one or two negative guys there, and they just obviously don't like the genre. 
Hmm. So most of the guys have said, hey. We in, love it. We love it. It's good. It's good fun. It's a good fun romp through the country there. If you, yeah, yeah, and uh, whatever. I like um, to hear one. Yeah. More. Now, okay, he's one. Uh, he's, he's a negative one or two. Okay. Dennis Swartz from Ozus World Movie Reviews gave the film a C-, minus, writing that it is tasteless, gruesomely awkward, and moronic. He obviously doesn't like these sorts of movies. Okay. I didn't. Uh, Chuck Bowen from Slant awarded the film three out of five stars, writing that although the horror pause of the film is somewhat effective, it failed to be even remotely funny. The guy must not have a sense of humour. I was tittering my way through the movie. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. I thought it was rather good. I Look, it's a, a real comedy. You will have belly laughing all the way through it. When you have a horror comedy, it's not going to be belly laughing all the way through, but you will see the humorous yeah. side of the uh, way it's played. Mm. Mm, yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah, that's funny. That's ridiculous. That should have happened, right? Yeah, that sort of stuff. Yeah, I suppose yeah. sometimes mm. these a bit te- like product placement. These mm. Texas type movies, um, they kind of inspired um, Rob Z- Zomb, not Rob, yeah, Rob Zombie for making his one hundred and one hundred. 1,000 corpses well, movies yeah. where they deal with um, crazed killers but with a sense of humour. Yeah. yeah, exactly right. And why can't you bring a, a nice piece of comedy into a horror movie? Yeah? You, you, look, you throw sex into it, you throw comedy into it, you got horror, and you throw a bit of sci-fi, you cover all genres. Mm-hmm. Look, look at Jason X. It's got a mm-hmm. sci-fi horror... There's a bit of sex thrown into it. It's an action adventure, or well, not adventure, but action. Yeah. So you've got all those different things rolling into one movie, and it makes a good movie. Yeah. yeah. I just hate people that <coughs> ruin it by saying, "Oh, it just this doesn't work for me because I don't think comedy and horror should um, be yeah. a mix." Some people, or have... some people don't like horror sci-fi, or the yeah, other, yeah. or or adventure. Enjoy horror. the trip. Yeah, how's that? I don't know mm. if there's such a genre called adventure horror or action Oh, horror. yeah, adventure horror. Like, what, what, what would you call King Kong? Oh, good point. It's an adventure movie. Mm, true. When it originally came out in the 30s, it was a horror movie. True, true. Aha. Mm. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. See what I mean? Um, Frankenstein was actually a gothic drama, mm. really, with a touch of horror in it. But they made it a horror movie, and uh, now it's served up for more like a uh, suspense thriller drama for Touch of Horror Friend. Yeah, I, s- so, yes, I sometimes yeah. look at these yeah. reviewers, mm. these old ones um, that review this for the f- and say the nasty stuff about it, and I keep seeing these guys as the ones who think the last that their generation of films is something really goes back many, many years. Mm. Not, I mean, when considering that they're probably stuck behind a desk and reviewing an, a movie is, movie yeah, but for the them. Point is, if you are in a position mm. for a newspaper or a magazine mm. to review a movie, what's the word for? Is it objectively? Is that the word I'm looking for? Well, yeah, without bias and say, okay... I have watched this movie. Okay. Okay. I don't like these sorts of movies, but I can't get my personal taste in the way. Mm. They should be able to evaluate it. Yeah, without as prejudice. As a third party, and say, without prejudice, say, okay, the film is good. It's got a good storyline. Blah 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 blah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's yeah. But say, I don't like these sorts of movies. I'm going to trash it. And that's what some of the guys do in these magazines and uh, newspapers, which yeah. is wrong. Yeah. I've been saying it for the past year and a half. Some of these guys let their personal taste get in the way of the review. We yeah. review movies that we like, obviously. If we wrote, mm. if we did a review on a movie we didn't like, mm. like a really, really pathetically bad movie, we would still try not to be troll-like and, say, and, and put the boot in. We'd say, look, we didn't like the movie because of this, this, this. Do a, criti- a critique on it, a mm. negative critique, if you will. But we'd still do a critique on, say, we didn't like because, okay, the storyline was lame. That part didn't work. That character there didn't work. Yeah. And we'd actually do a post-mortem on it. We wouldn't just say, it's a bag of crap. 
watch yeah, some of these guys. Some but, of these guys, yeah. the ones who do the short, but do yeah. the to the point. Yeah. Um, they just um they kind just of bag it they for bag no real it. reason because they can. Because, like the guy yeah. said in this mm. one, he says it's not really to my taste, and yeah. I know it's not it's not a movie I really like. I really yeah, would yeah. go like yeah. Go see. A lot of them say that, but. They've got to be able to do a balanced review. Yeah, that's another yeah. thing about some yeah. of these reviews. They say, um, <clears throat> "I never, um, I know, I don't really like this movie, or I, or I never would ever see this movie." But yeah. the way they say <clears throat> phrase it, I keep thinking, <clears throat> "Do they ever watch the movie?" Yeah, they, they, look, there's an old saying. Yeah, you know, that, that I heard him you know years ago at a movie or somewhere that uh, the guy said, "I don't know much about art, but I know what I like." Which means a guy can walk in an art gallery and say, that's a load of crap, that's a load of crap, I like that picture over there. But he can't appreciate all the other pictures. Hmm. The, uh, the portraits, the landscapes, you know. Um, he can't, he can look at them and say, okay, I don't like that sort of thing, but yeah, it's good, it's, it's well done. Look at it, yeah, it looks, that horse looks really lifelike, you know. He can't, yeah, and the yeah. same with these reviewers. Yeah, it's oh, just, yeah. I, yeah. they just hate mm. it when they just do it so bluntly. They, they just say, gross, um, what was that one reviewer who said all these um, obnoxious words? Oh, doesn't matter. He doesn't says tasteless, gruesome, awkward, uh, and moronic. No. Yeah. All those words are not even a good enough um, give you a good enough idea and, of know, what it's all what they th- <clears throat> what his thought is. We, we've reviewed quite a few movies. Over lots of movies, quite a few, fifty, hundred fifty odd movies hmm. so far, and um, I've noticed a recurring theme. With What's these guys who do the reviews, hmm. there's a lot of movies which have been made on a budget. Mm-hmm. You know, that's three, two, three, four, five, six thousand. Yeah, you know, or maybe a little bit more. But they've made a monster at the box office. They've made a buckload, a truckload of money at it, and the reviewers didn't like it. Yeah, it's so but weird. But the that. paying public think it's great. Yeah, it's yeah. usually um, sometimes it's uh, the reviewers would give it a positive critique, and other times the audiences either dislike it yeah, or yeah, like exactly it, right, the other way around. or yeah. Yeah. or even the film festivals um, don't don't disagree with both of those yeah, um, people, yeah. and they go with their own um, gut instincts. Yeah. But, the, but the, the reviewers are seldom, well, what's that? What's that? rarely on the same page as the paying public. Hmm. I can't understand it. They're the same people. Yeah. Technically. Yeah. Unless the reviewers all come from Mars or Venus or something or other, you know. Yeah. Not, not used to earthly humour. Yeah. Or sci-fi or, or, the or ed- horror. Or their editor just says, guess what, you're going to review this movie whether you like it or not. But that's their job and they're supposed to be able to do it objectively, I just yeah, said. I know. I know you said that. Yeah, and then they can't just say, oh, it's crap, I'll put a crap review on yeah. it. Yeah, they're probably just... <clears throat> I get I, paid per word. I get yeah. paid per word to just review a movie and say yeah. what I like. It's rubbish, Even yeah. if it's just something yeah. that's free words. Or, or This is crap. Then no, that's, that's not a review. Is yeah, it? <laughs> yeah. Even just saying one syllable or one word, sort of or thing. Or, yeah, that, yeah. How do you spell that? I don't know, but I think it's probably those words I mentioned, like tasteless and other stuff. Oh, okay. Black. <laughs> you can't, I can't spell that. Anyway, they just—they just, <laughs> they just don't know. Don't. Just, I think some of these people are just a stranger <clears throat> to new stuff. I mean, there is nah, some look, really good stuff out look, there. Like, I'm going, to, I'm going to take it back. I don't know how old some of these guys are. Okay. But this this Roger Ebert guy's name has been going around. So I would say he might be an older guy. Hmm. And they're, yeah, not being, I'm not knocking older guys. I mean, not but he might have grown up watching dramas, musicals, adventures, that sort of, And he, he may not have liked watching horrors and sci-fis. Hmm. So obviously then, if he comes along and has to review a horror or a sci-fi... It's not what he likes to watch. Yeah. So, yeah, I prefer a musical, Bus- yeah. Busby Berkeley, you know, whatever, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and that sort of stuff. Yeah, I often have encountered with people who, mm. and most of the people I've encountered with are all say the same, some of them say the same thing. They're not into horror. Yeah. So we've got some friends who won't do reviews with us because they're a couple of ladies and they prefer to do fantasy movies. So we don't invite them to do any podcasts with us when we're doing uh, horror and sci-fi. Yeah. yeah, and some of the people I've talked to who <clears throat> who have, whenever I do a review on a movie, I do get comments saying I don't really like horror because it's not really my thing. Yeah. I get a, com- a few comments about that. 
Well, we must get back in a few more sci-fi. Although some, I do get the good a good comment here and there where they say, "Oh, I heard about this movie, but I never even actually watched it." Yeah, but the, now that you've told me about it, I'll go and check good. it out. Yeah, good, yeah good. A, name, a name of a movie doesn't really tell you too much. Tell like it's a Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Well, that what's that tell you? What's right. that? It doesn't tell you too much of anything until you see the movie and say, Ooh. "Yes." It's a blood, th- a, it's a blood fest. You know, that's awesome. It's great, but it doesn't tell you anything really about what's happening in the movie. Mm. It could be anything. Mm. It could be a chainsaw massacre. It could be bikies having a fight with chainsaws, mm. or it could be a mad, mad uh, guy running over his kids with a chainsaw. Yeah, you don't know until you yeah. see the movie. I'll let you guys know when we <coughs> might do that review next. I mean, I've been wanting to do Chainsaw Massacre, the original. Yeah, Woo-hoo. and maybe the 3D, 3D one because that's more of a direct um, sequel to Is this it? movie because oh, yeah. the good. other ones, they continue to drift in different directions. They do. They, I mean, they're still good stories. They're and still like, good stories. Don't I what, don't get ha- me wrong. Having said, we could do Children of the Corn too. Mm, we might. I mean, there's a few, we won't do all of them, but do the main yeah. ones or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Well, as I said before in the past, we mm. won't can, um, do a genre of, of Texas-related movies. I'm considering well, not all Texas. I know. Yeah, they're, they're just country. Yeah, country ma- type. Ma- 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 uh, America, yeah, you say horror. Texas. They're not Texas. It's just country. You know, it yeah. could be anywhere. Yeah. yeah. Like I was just watching just a while ago, I was watching the, um, let me see, Dark Knight of the Scarecrow, I think I'm not sure it's called. I don't um, I don't remember, but I know for a fact I may look at making, uh, probably reviewing one of at least um, a horror Scarecrow movie. I haven't figured out which one just yet mm. because there's some really good ones out there and there are others I can't really access at the moment because it's usually, it's really hard because some pe- some people don't, have them available. Yeah. Anyway, because mm. either it's because it's an independent film and you can't get a copy. You of can't it. get a copy mm. because um, it's not mm. popular enough, or yeah, or it, or it never went to directly to DVD yet. Yeah. And sometimes with, with the older movies, I mean, I don't know what's like in the United States and stuff. We we we, we scour mm. the shops and libraries and stuff, and there's a lot of stuff we can't get. So I, I have to go online and get. YouTube and whatever to try to get a copy of a movie so I can review it. Yeah, and the yeah. same for me mm. when I'm uh, trying to um, go on um, to special DVD services to find um, movies there too. And while I may not be able to go watch them on YouTube, I feel I have no choice but to buy them. I mean, I mean YouTube's not too bad, but they compress the crap. They're, 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 they're compressed too much or it's... Third or fourth or fifth or sixth generation copy, and it's all blurry and it's bad and it's wiggly and it's cr- yeah. Mm. yeah, I'd rather get a good clean copy. And other times yeah. you mm. you can't get really the next movie because obviously the, the per- whoever mm. I think has not bothered to d- do it. Like when I was reviewing um, Buried Alive, and when I was trying to find the sequel for that one. The Buried Alive too. Yeah, yeah, I had to go and get the um, DVD. While well, I never seen them it on YouTube or even on on any downloads yeah. we've downloaded. Um, I'm well. I was a lost. I was sort of at a loose end. Yeah. And I had to do what comes to nature. Well, no, we, we 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 normally will rent a copy or buy a copy. Mm. But if we can't get them, we have, we have to so yeah go to the next level, which yeah, is yeah, uh, which is we even don't, buy we don't, one. We don't like no. If we can't buy a copy, instead if we can't buy or rent a copy, then we're forced to yeah, go to YouTube and other ways to try to you know, find a copy so we can find the old the the, the, the especially the older movies. Yeah, it's it's just hard, just especially yeah. especially if it's not on YouTube, then you're forced to buy it. I said if we can't. Find a copy to buy, I just said. I know that. I'm just saying yeah, that said, when you know, when we don't have it on yeah. YouTube, then and we're you forced, and we can't rent it, we mm-hmm. have forced to make a snap decision by buying it. Yeah, and, and, and hopefully it's good. But if we can't buy it, then we have to go and search and bo- rape, pillage, and plunder the whole world to try finding a copy of a movie. And and which get, yeah. p- becomes really hard because yeah, yeah. sometimes they know they probably don't even go to directly to DVD. Well, some don't. Some don't. I mean, I, 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 before we go, I, 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 I'll, I'll, I'll mention the availability and whatever in a minute, but a good example of trying to get a movie. Uh, I, I might have mentioned this before in another podcast. For years, I've been trying to chase a movie. It was made in 1964. It was a pilot for a TV series which never took off. Now, the movie was had, uh, uh, supposed to be the flagship 
of the a pilot ser- uh, of the series called The Haunted, uh, and they named this movie The Ghost of Sierra de Cobra. Hmm. Okay, now that was Martin Landau played the lead role. Mm-hmm. Now I saw it on TV back in the late sixties, early seventies, and it was written by or was it written or directed? I, I can't jo- by Joseph Stefano. Joseph Stefano got into it. Yeah, the uh, guy who helped uh, si- um, Alfred limits, Hitchcock in Psycho. and Outer Limits and whatever. Yeah, Joseph Stefano. Now, the point is, he was involved with that. It was going to be a TV series. Hmm. But this movie, which actually started off as a 45-minute TV pilot, they extended it to a movie court to make some money on it, hmm. uh, to recruit some expenses, but then it disappeared. It was locked in a vault for years and yeah, years, decades. Because and it came out about five, five six, seven years yeah. ago. Hmm. They finally released it. Yeah. Well, I've been chasing it for years. Yeah, and their yeah. lame excuse was, it was so scary. Well, t- No, back in those days. Back in those yeah, days. Yeah. But nowadays, it doesn't look as very scary. No, it's, it's, it's not a bad movie, but by today's standards, we've been desensitised so much, it's not a bad movie at all, but it's not that bad. Yeah, their interpretation yeah. of scary no, was nothing to compare to They didn't say it was scary. It wasn't heading in the right direction they, the production company or TV station wanted. I thought it was Steve. No, they didn't was too say. I didn't say it was too scary. They said it wasn't heading in the right direction for the series. Yeah. Okay, they did. They maybe they didn't want it as dark or as horrific as that. They maybe a bit more family orientated. Mm. I don't know what they wanted. Yeah, I can't find but information sh- on why. But there's no excuse to lock it they, in the vault no, and they forget did a about pilot it. And the pilot did. It's like in the thirteen thirty Mockingbird Lane. They did it. And they didn't like it, so they didn't make the series. I know that. It's, but same, yeah. it's no excuse to okay. lock it in a vault and forget about yeah, it. But the, it's it was, not right. It was. That's the whole point. But it finally came out. Digit, digitalized too. Yeah, it's really good. But having it to wait the, this long. Yeah, well, for I finally it, got it before I died. Really good. Now it's just not right, <laughs> really, to be honest. I know, but that's just what I'm saying. It's hard to get product sometimes, especially the old movies. Now, moving right along, availability. Yes, you can get it as, uh, on Amazon. You can rent it. Uh, there are a few for sale. Um, eBay appears to be plenty for sale. Uh, DVD and Blu-ray. There's some VHS tapes as well, so be careful when you click on your little buttons there. Um, I would say one thing. Um, it's... Um, um, I just what I was going to say. I got a mental block now. Um, no, nah, it's gone now. Never uh-huh. mind. It must be the drugs wearing off. I don't know. Uh, uh-huh. No, nah, it's it's worth a look at. I mean, uh, if you don't want to buy it, certainly rent a copy of it and have a look at it. Yeah. Um, There's plenty probably yeah. to go out there at the yeah. when you think about it. Yeah, and um, I, I wouldn't go to YouTube and different things unless you really have to because like the compression ratios are bad. I haven't looked and see if it's there anyway. But sometimes I was talking. Yeah, oh, you get you, know, you get in something like episodes or your five minute lots or mm. something or other, and, and oh, we've got two or three missing. Oh, and yeah. there are some times yeah. when you're trying to download them, they might give you the wrong dates. Yeah, whatever. Sometimes yeah. And I'm not just wrong sequences and yeah. But anyway, um, well, they do sometimes put in the wrong date oh, because of some oh, silly no, misunderstanding. Now we are going to give it our rating. Right. I am going to give this. Mm-hmm. I'll say eight and a half. It doesn't quite get to a nine for me. One of the reasons being is I thought one or two things could have been done better, especially the fight scene with the chainsaws. It dragged on too much, and I was, I was losing interest. Yeah, I think I'd yeah. give this one um, nine out of ten myself, mostly because um, I do think that there was a bit of storyline that we missed from Bruce's background. Like, if he said he yeah. ran away, there must have been a yeah, reason. The, yeah, nothing ever came out. Yeah, there's, like, no, there's no backstory. There's if, no nothing. Yeah, they it's talked about... Um, take it for granted. They talked about... Yeah, um, yeah. Grandma did this, grand- mommy, dad this, yada, yada, yada. They never yada, mentioned but anything about... They, they never mentioned yeah. about why did he ran away. Did Was it because of a traumatic experience that, or, co- that or was caused? Or he thought Vincent was a bit of a strange one. Yeah. yeah. Well, who knows? Don't yeah. know. It, Got, it never came out. It, so, yeah, yeah, there's something lacking in the script. Like, no, I'm not knocking what Robert and Stephen did. Me neither. With the script. Don't get me wrong. The Jafe guys uh, did a good job. But mm. the, uh, someone should read through it and say, hey, well... Mm, Maybe you could have added something to it. Yeah, so, at least yeah, yeah. at least an explanation to tie the story together. Exactly. I mean, bring that's it all together to yeah. explain why he ran away in the first place. Yeah. Mm. Anyone join the circus? Mm. Nah. nah. Anyway, anyway, it would have not have <laughs> explained why how he was able to become sheriff. He had to well, he go away. to school, he, didn't he? he? I, don't, I don't know. He ran away. He didn't say he didn't. Did he come back? He didn't say anything. He said I ran away. Hmm. It doesn't say where he went to. You know. mm. 
So it doesn't mean that yeah. they go into, uh, you know, they say, I, I went into a foster home or they got me and they took me back home and I had to live with Vincent. I don't know. Or do they have to, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, so whatever. there is like, I'm not going to pick this movie apart either no, myself. It's, it's, it's a good it's movie. A good it's a good, movie, good fun movie. But that's why we're not giving it to any high school. If yeah. there was an explanation for, for, for their background into the story, I could probably then tie it all together and yeah, a bit more. and say that's a, that's um conclusion the, the story and yeah. say, but I'm I'm. I mean, you didn't need any backstories about the victims, but mm. certainly about the uh, Vincent, uh, Vincent Ida and, and Ida Bruce. and the brother. Those three, they're the yeah. three main people. They were just there. Yeah, I yeah. know Vincent mm. is very deeply religious and his sister idolises him. And, yeah, and, and Bruce and, is yeah. um, a um, um, fine outstanding police sh- officer sh- or sheriff or deputy or something. Sheriff yeah. and, mm. and pretty much um, disregards the rules yeah, sometimes. Yeah, so yeah, he's a sheriff. No, he bends the rules. Bends yeah. the rules. He's a sheriff, that's right. Yeah, he's a sheriff. Uh, but so he's a sheriff and two good God-fearing people and there's no backstory and it, it, it just leaves the bit yeah, Ma- unresolved. Vacuous? Yeah, vacuous? yeah unre- mm. Well, not unresolved. It's not the word for this. No, but um, it, it just needs a, it it need a bit need, of a filler. It need padding. That's yeah, it. A little bit of padding, padding. For, yeah, to bring out their why they are. They. I mean, the Chainsaw Texas Chainsaw Massacre. That actually had a bit of backstory. Yeah, there was. Brought into it here there and were, there, you know? Yeah, they yeah. did a lot of prequels. Say yeah, yeah, three yeah. prequels. I should mention. Yeah. That yeah. explained why Leatherface is why he is yeah, like this. Yeah, we found out he was mentally what well, he's mentally handicapped and something else and blah blah. And, yeah. And the yeah, yeah. Yeah, there were like several different prequels with different um, backstories. Yeah, to yeah, them. yeah. And, yeah and they, they tried to re- bring stuff into the story. Yeah. 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 And while I do think they that three-dimensional one kind of ties in with the original a little bit because it does seem to click in place yep. thanks to Bill Mosley and his great way of trying to act like um, Leatherface's older brother, which kind of works. <laughs> I, I actually talked to him not too long about uh, giving, giving me some advice about more about putting comedy in a slasher. That's, and he told me some interesting good advice about that. It's it's really funny you just mentioned that before before we go. You you could take a bad and I mean I don't mean a bad bad I mean I mean a bad horror movie. Mm. Okay, a pretty pathetic one, which no one's going to like. If you change it and made it humorous, probably people like it mm. because. It's so bad, the mm. humour makes it good. Yeah, see, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bill Mosley, mm. he also played shot, I mean, shot, I mean, uh, shot top, I, mean, I can't ooh, remember his ooh. name, in, in the sequel, who's um, to um, to um, Chainsaw Massacre, and he also stars as um, one, um, he was also starring in um, 1,000 Corpses with dear old Rob Zombie, <laughs> And it has done a lot of crazy type interesting roles. Oh, well, there you go, Mr. Which... Zombie. There's nothing so good. It's just like going on Sesame Street, hey, mm-hmm. or or the Muppet Show or something. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> I think that's about it for us. So guys, feel free to check out um, uh, Motel Hell when you can, and let us know in the comments what you guys think. Yeah, look, we think it's a it's a good watch. It, 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 for, it's got a few faults in it, but in the main, it's a good watch. And if you take the satirical side of it, you like satire when it comes to horror movies. It's funny. Yeah. It's you say, oh, that's not a crap. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. It's fun. You know, it's, that's, what, that's what makes it funny. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So this is Sarah Stevenson. And Michael. Saying, we'll see you guys for our next podcast. And I hope you guys have a good week. Yeah, guys. Have a good one.